Hey, um, first, happy St. Patrick's Day to one and all. We're all Irish on St. Patrick's Day, aren't we? At least if we know what's good for us. Anyway, in keeping with the holiday, I want to talk a bit about some Blarney that's been coming my way of late. Uh, this is a quick follow-up to the video I did just the other day about whether Jesus could have called off his arrest and execution. There's a link to that video to the right of the screen if you haven't seen it already. Um, basically, the question was posed in light of Matthew 26:53, where Jesus appears to say that God would help Jesus stop the whole thing if Jesus were to ask. Um, I recognize that this was a challenging question for several reasons, so it was nice to see a number of people jump in to offer their takes on it. Um, there's one I found especially interesting because it so effectively illustrates the problem believers are up against when they're dealing with this stuff and how they often resort to bullshit as a way of escape. Uh, B. Burchin, I hope I'm saying that right, B. Burchin, uh, weighed in on the question of whether Jesus would have put a stop to his arrest and execution. Uh, by the way, B. Burchin seems like a very nice, very bright guy. I subscribe to his channel. It's clear he's committed to his faith. Um, here was his first response to the question. Yes, Jesus could have called it all off. He said that it must happen this way because his suffering for sin was already planned before the world began, and Christ came to this world to live out these events as foretold, culminating in the substitutionary atonement for sin on the cross. Christ always had the power to stop the whole thing, but he willingly gave himself up. In fact, he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. He gave it. It wasn't taken. Good vid, Prof. MTH. Good, clear answer. Nicely done. I followed up with this. Thanks, B. Burchin. What's your best guess about what would have happened to Jesus if he had called it off, gotten all those angels from God and so forth? What would have been next for Jesus? I mean, it seemed to me that this wouldn't just be a matter of Jesus saying to the brute squad that had come out to get him, you know what, fellas, this is so not me. And boom, the whole thing's off. Uh, the New Testament describes this in dire terms, right? Peter tells us that God had this plan in place since before the creation of the world. And again and again, the Gospels have Jesus saying that he had come to do the will of his Father with respect to dying and so on. So I wondered, if Jesus had called it off, what would be next for him? B. Bertrand replied, I don't normally speculate about such things, but I can bet that he wouldn't have gone to the cross, and I would still be dead in my sin today. Christ was and is fully God and fully man. He felt the pains of his flesh, but also he had eternal knowledge. He laid aside the prerogative to use his power to save himself in order that he would save his people from sin and the just wrath of God. He knew what he was in for. That's the reason for the anguish at Gethsemane. This answer seemed a bit less clear and crisp than the previous one, but I forged ahead. Nevertheless, B. Burchin noted that Jesus wouldn't have gone to the cross, so I asked, wouldn't that have put Jesus in a problematic position with God the Father? B. Burchin responded, I'm not sure what you're getting at. There is no way to speculate about such things, and I fail to see the value in doing so. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are three persons of one substance. They cannot be in disagreement or act alone or separate from one another. The only time Christ was separated from God was during the three hours of darkness when Christ suffered the pains of hell for sinners. The Trinity was and is in perfect agreement and harmony. So now it sounded like B. Burton was saying the exact opposite of what he'd initially said. Uh, it went from, yes, Jesus could have called it all off, to members of the Trinity cannot be in disagreement or act alone or separate from one another. I commented back, but B. Burton, in your earlier comment, you unequivocally stated that Jesus could have called it all off. Of course, calling it all off would have been to thwart the will of God, which you now claim Jesus could not have done. So which is it? Jesus could have called it all off, or Jesus could not have called it all off. Thanks.
And here is where the transition began. B. Bertrand wrote, Christ had the power to call it off, but he chose not to do so. He did not because of the nature of his deity as a person of the Trinity. When I said they cannot act alone, that does not mean they are constrained by that relationship. My bullshit meter was starting to get a little snappy after reading this, but I thought it a good idea to try once more to get clarification. I wrote, okay, so I want to be sure I'm understanding, B. Bertrand. When you said they cannot be in disagreement or act alone or separate from one another, you meant that they can do such things, but they choose not to do such things. Do I have it right there? B. Bertrand responded, by the character of God, he cannot contradict himself. There's no outside force constraining him to maintain that character. Are the parameters by which the Trinity functions a choice? That is, can the Trinity choose to act separate? You've delved into the realm of mystery. The Trinity is a mystery. There's some we understand, but some we don't and are not privy to. I cannot answer your question with a definitive yes or no. However, I think the answer I've given is sufficient. Okay, so now we're in knee deep. It's gone from the beautifully crisp and clear, yes, Jesus could have called it all off, to all this stuff about parameters by which the Trinity functions, and I cannot answer your question with a distinctive yes or no. I responded, yet your earlier statements were so clear. First, that Jesus could have called it all off. Second, that he could not. Third, that he could, but chose not to call it off. I'm not persuaded that delving into the purported realm of mystery is the problem here. Uh, be sure you're seated for the next response from B. Burchin. Again, nothing personal, but this is the sort of muddle that believers march off into. No, my answer is still clear. Yes, he could have called it off, but his nature character and role in the Trinity would not allow for it based upon no outside constraint. Therefore he chose not to call it off. Um, then he accused me of twisting his words. So here are the contradictory claims with the talk about Jesus removed. Um, X could have done Z. X's nature would not allow for Z, but X was under no external restraint. Now, external restraint is a red herring, just it's nothing to do with what we're talking about. Um, but is it just me or is it crystal clear to everyone watching that if X's nature, X's nature would not allow X to do Z, then X very much cannot do Z. I could choose to sprout wings and fly, but my nature very much doesn't allow for it, which means I'm not able to sprout wings and fly by nature. More specifically, it means I can't truly choose to sprout wings and fly. In the same way, if Jesus' nature very much didn't allow him to choose to call off his arrest and execution, then he was not able to call it off. However, we have a believer here who wants to say that Jesus could have called it off, even though by his own description of Jesus, Jesus could not have called it off. Ladies and gentlemen, I leave it to you. Thank you.